Hi, welcome back to Kids Church. I hope you had a great Easter and you haven't eaten too much chocolate. Last week we looked at the victorious raising of Jesus from the dead. This is the best part of the Easter story. Not only did Jesus willingly die to take away our sins on the cross, but he was always also raised to give us a new life and an abundant life. And we heard last week in the story how this is always part of God's plan, that Jesus dying on the cross, because of sin, we couldn't go in. We couldn't be friends with God. So Jesus was raised to life, was all part of God's big plan to bring mankind back to himself. Throughout history, God made promises to his people about the special one, about the Messiah who will come to be the saviour of the world. And we know that was Jesus. Now these promises were made to special people often called prophets. And these promises were called prophecies. In today's story that we're going to hear, it follows on from Jesus being seen resurrected in the Easter garden by the women. They had gone and told some of the disciples that they had seen the risen Jesus. That same day there were some different friends, not the twelve disciples, walking back from Jerusalem and they had a very special encounter and we're going to hear about that now. By Candlebook Publishers. And you can read this story yourselves in Mark 16 or Luke 24 or John 20. The disciples see Jesus alive. The disciples could hardly believe that Jesus had actually come to life, but soon they began to see proof. Two disciples were walking to Emmaus. They were still very sad about Jesus' death. Suddenly, Jesus was with them, but they didn't recognise him. Jesus asked them why they were so sad, and they said, Don't you know what happened to Jesus last week? His enemies crucified him. Some of our people heard that he has risen, but how can we tell? Jesus talked to them for a long time, explaining all the scriptures that told about the Saviour and how they applied to him. The disciples invited him to supper and when Jesus broke bread, they realised that they'd been talking with Jesus all the time. He disappeared, but they hurried back to Jerusalem to tell everyone that Jesus was alive. They learnt that Peter had seen Jesus too. While they were talking about him, Jesus appeared to all of them. He showed them the nail wounds in his hands and feet. Then he ate some supper with them. So from the story I just read you, the disciples who were walking along the road called Emmaus Road, they seemed confused and, and upset. They had heard that Jesus had risen from the other disciples possibly from Mary, or the two Marys, but it's like they didn't believe it, that they seemed confused and they were still sad. Maybe they just didn't understand what, what it meant. Perhaps the two men believed that his body had been stolen. We don't know. But then Jesus, he walks alongside them. He tries to explain things to them. We're not sure how God kept the men from recognising Jesus because they didn't recognise it was Jesus at first. A bit like we, me, my face paints on, which we're going to talk about later, how he looked different to, to those, those men that they didn't recognise him. They probably thought he must be a stranger who just arrived in town because they started explaining to, to Jesus what had happened. They were so surprised that the stranger didn't know what had happened. Everyone in Jerusalem knew about Jesus being hung on the cross. It was a huge event. Everyone was still talking about it. And that was days later. 
And now this is the same day that Jesus is risen and, and the word was getting out that Jesus was risen and, and this, this stranger is walking alongside them, didn't seem to know what was going on. So Jesus quickly reminded the two men, the two disciples, that the prophets had foretold all these things which were going to happen. He told them that the Christ or Messiah had to suffer and then be raised again. God had promised it in these prophecies. Then Jesus started from the beginning and explained what the Old Testament prophecies had said about him. But the men still did not know that it was Jesus speaking to them. It wasn't until Jesus broke the bread that they suddenly recognised Jesus for who he was. And we don't actually know which prophecies Jesus shared with these men. But there were lots of prophecies foretold. There was over 150 prophecies relating to the Messiah coming and saving them. But we don't know which ones he shared. But let's have a look at some ourselves and see which ones Jesus fulfilled. I'm going to share with you another one of my really favourite books. And this is called Bible Infographics for Kids. And it's published by Harvest House Publishing. And it's really great because it shows you in lots of different facts and pictures the different prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. So these were God's promises that he made to the prophets that a Messiah was going to come. And Jesus, I said, how many did he fulfill? Jesus actually fulfilled them all. So we'll have a look at them here. And if you have a Bible, you can look up the prophecies in the Old Testament and see how they've been fulfilled in Jesus. So you can pause this video, get your Bible out, look up the passage in the Old Testament and you can see how Jesus made that happen. He was that person that they were talking about in the Old Testament. So first of all, we have a descendant of Abraham. Tick, Jesus was that. A descendant of David. Tick, Jesus was that. Born in Bethlehem. Tick, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Born of virgin. Tick, Flees to Egypt, yes, when he was a baby, um, Mary and Joseph flee to Egypt, tick. Follows a messenger, tick. Teaches in parables, tick. Rides in Jerusalem on a donkey, tick. Betrayed by a close friend who eats with him. You'll remember that from our last story, the Judas, tick. Side is pierced. Jeez, that happened to Jesus. Hands and feet are pierced. That also happened to Jesus. No bones are broken. That happened to Jesus. None of his bones are broken on the cross, which is very unusual. Rises from the dead. Tick, we know that happened because we celebrated Easter. And sends to heaven and sits at God's right hand. Well, that does happen. We haven't read that yet in our story, but that that does happen. And what's the odds of Jesus being able to fulfill all of these prophecies? Every single one. Well, you can see down here, this part of the page here. And this is by an author called Josh McDowell. And he did all the maths on this, as you can see. The chance is that one person could fill just eight of the prophecies... And we know that Jesus fulfilled over 150. So if just eight of the prophecies are one in 10 to the 17th power. That is one followed by 17 zeros. This is the same as covering the entire state of Texas, which is a very big state, with silver dollars two feet deep, marking one of them, mixing them all up and having a blindfolded person go in and pick the right one in just one try. Yet Jesus fulfilled not only eight prophecies, but hundreds. There is no doubt that Jesus was the Messiah sent by God. And on the other side, you can see one person fulfilling eight, 48 prophecies. And look at all those zeros. And Jesus fulfilled far more than 48 prophecies. 
I don't think we'd have enough servos for that. We heard um, how in the story the disciples didn't recognise Jesus. Maybe he looked a bit different. I thought, well, have a look at these optical illusions. Can you recognise, like the disciples couldn't recognise Jesus. Can you recognise what's happening in this picture? Can you see a boy sitting, or a girl, sitting on a bank, looking at some houses with a tree over the head? Or do you see a man's face? Or maybe you see both. And here, look at this picture. Can you see the cats, the frogs, and the dragonflies? It's interesting, isn't it, how the disciples didn't recognise Jesus? And that's the theme we've picked up on for today's craft, one of the crafts anyway, is perhaps doing face painting. So we don't look quite the same as we normally do. So I'm going to show you some pictures of some face painting that I've done with Vangeline. It's sort of a festival themed because Easter is a festival. So we did festival themed face paints, but you could do any. You could become a tiger, you could do Spider-Man, you could have butterflies. The you know, There's so many different things you can do with face paints. And the other craft we have to do as well is we're going to do making. We're going to make some rocky road. So this week we've been um, disguising ourselves. Can you see who we are through our face paints? This is a face paint that I've done on Evangeline. She's just decided she wants to put some spots at the bottom. Can you tell that's Evangeline? <laughs> there, from that perspective, turn around, you can tell it's her in context. With the story of Emmaus Road, well, thinking about the roads in those times were probably very dusty and rocky. So I thought, what can we do with these Easter eggs that we've got left over? And I thought maybe we could make a rocky road. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to use some chocolate and an egg. Some marshmallows, little marshmallows. And I've broken up some digestive biscuits. Now I'm going to need an adult to help you with this. I'm going to melt the chocolate in the microwave. First of all, for 30 seconds, take it out, then stir it, and then put it back in the microwave. Every 15 minutes, 15 seconds, I will take it out and stir. So it's 30 seconds to start with, bring it out, stir, then another 15 seconds, and keep going until it forms a liquid chocolate. This is my chocolate I've taken out of the microwave. This is just one half of the Easter egg and it only took 45 seconds to get to this consistency. Now I'm going to pour in the marshmallows and the biscuits and stir it around. I have lined a little pot with greaseproof paper so that I can get the mixture out. It will then need to go into the fridge. It will take at least half an hour to set. So I'm going to finish stirring this off, stirring it up, then I'm going to put it in the fridge to set. There we go. And we'll see what the children think. Right, so I'm going to tip it into the pot now. And put it in the fridge. So here's the finished rocky road. I've just brought it up to Elijah's bedroom so he can give it a try and give me a mark out of 10. So Elijah, take a piece of the rocky road and see what you think. Uh, pretty good, you know. It's alright, is it? Mm. Marks out of 10? 
Nine. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm pleased with that. The brisket tastes good as well. So we're going to finish now and we're going to close in prayer and I'm going to use a picture from today's story to help us with our prayer today. Okay, dear Jesus, we remember today how you helped your friends on Emmaus Road by walking alongside them and help them understand who you are. Lord, help us to be that friend to others. And Lord Jesus, open my eyes to see how you are present with me each day. Amen.